In this video, I'll show you how to measure customer lifetime value in a way that allows you to easily compare the value of customers from different time-based cohorts. If you're working in e-commerce and you need to measure the value of your customers in order to optimize your paid traffic or extract insights or signals from your transaction data, this video is for you. The video has four parts. I'm going to start off by showing you how you can make CLV more actionable in the sense that it can be used to generate insights in a consistent way. Then I'm going to walk you through how this can be done in Python. After training a CLV model, I'll show you what the model is capable of capturing from your data in terms of customer behavior. Finally, I'll show you how to use the model in a win-back scenario and give you a simple overview of how you can automate and deploy the model for maximum benefits. One of the main reasons you want to estimate the customer lifetime value is that you want to be able to compare the value of your customers. So if you have a look at this graphical representation of a fraction of your customer base, you can see that at any given time, your customers will have different lifetimes or ages as they are acquired at different points in time. So if you want to compare the value of a customer acquired three months ago to a customer acquired today, the first customer will have had more time to make purchases. Hence, you can't really make the comparison. So in order to compare customers, we fix the horizon over which we make the comparison. Predicting customer lifetime value can help you with this problem. So let's say that you're interested in comparing customers over a two-year horizon. Let's assume that the customer, or a customer was acquired three months ago. What you do then is that you define the customer lifetime value as the sum of the value from all the transactions made in the first three months and then the predicted revenue for the remaining 21 months. This approach to predicting customer lifetime value has three main advantages. First of all, you ensure that customers can be compared across different time-based cohorts, since the CLV is always a measure of the value generated of the same fixed time horizon. Secondly, you ensure that predicted CLV converges to realized CLV, so you can actually check that your predictions are correct. And then thirdly, the fact that CLV is realized gives you less uncertainty in the estimates. So if you want to use the estimates to optimize your bits in paid traffic, this is a huge advantage. Once you make these predictions for each customer, you get a picture that resembles this. Every customer can now be compared to any other customer, group of customers, as the lifetime covers same fixed time horizon. And the only difference between the customers is how much of the value that has been realized and how much is predicted. So you now have a metric that allows you to dig deeper into your data and understand what characterizes your most valuable customers. To get started, we're going to pip install a few Python libraries into a virtual environment. In particular, we're going to install the Shopify Python API and we're going to install Lifetimes. Lifetimes is the library we're going to use to make the CLV predictions. You can make the predictions with any other CLV library you want. The principles of the video still apply. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to import the Shopify data module that we wrote in an earlier video. I'll put a link to that one below. And then we're going to extract the transaction data that we need from a Shopify store. Then we're going to write a function that takes this Shopify order data object and loads transactions into a pandas data frame. We are specifically interested in extracting the timestamp of the order, the subtotal price, the order ID, and the customer ID. This will give us what we need to create the input to the CLV model. After creating the data frame with all orders, we can move on to create the data frame that will serve as an input to the CLV model. To do that, we use the function summary data from transaction data that can be found in the sub module utils in the lifetimes package. We'll add an additional column called monetary value by taking the average of transaction values for each customer and then join the new column with the summary column. We now have what we need to fit the first part of the CLV model, which is used to predict the number of transactions a customer will make in the future. We do that by importing the beta geo fitter and fit that on the frequency, recency, and the age columns. A successful fit should return the message that you can see below the code block showing the individual parameter values. Next, we need to model the expected monetary value of the individual orders. We do that by fitting the gamma gamma model to the data. 
This fitter will take frequency and monetary value as an input and is fitted on customers with repeat purchases only. Once you fit the model, you get a message similar to the message you got when you fitted the beta geofitter. So for this video, I wanted to demonstrate a common problem with this part of the fitting process. Note that the parameter Q is less than one, which means that the inverse gamma distribution, which is the distribution fitted to the data, has no mean. In other words, the model does not really fit the data. And this is a common problem with the lifetimes package and is typically caused by outliers in the data. The gamma gamma fitter has a built-in CLV prediction method. And if we use that on the data, we see that the CLV values or predicted CLV values are indeed negative. One way to fix this problem is to remove the outliers from the data until you get a fit where the Q parameter is greater than one. Alternatively, you can just skip this part of the estimation process and use the raw monetary values to model the CLV, and I'll show you how to do that next. So instead of using the gamma gamma fitters built-in CLV prediction method, you can import the underlying function from the lifetimes utils sublibrary. And note that there's an underscore here in, in the code. So by using underscore lifetime, customer lifetime value with the exact same input, you are predicting CLV with the raw monetary values instead of the modified or the modeled monetary values. And in most practical use cases, using the raw monetary values will be enough since the it's the prediction of the expected number of purchases that's the important part of the CLV prediction process especially if you use a model to value cohorts of customers and not individual customers. And once you make the prediction, you'll see that it fixes the problem with the negative CLV values. The next thing we want to do is we want to predict the individual components of CLV as described in the beginning of the video. That is, we want to predict the equity, the unrealized part of the CLV, and we also like to predict the number of future purchases. You have to find a new column in the data frame called rest, which is the period for which we want to predict the future purchases and revenue, in this case, for a combined period of 24 months. So if a customer made the first purchase six months ago, the rest or the remainder of the period for that customer will be 18 months. This allows us to predict the future revenue for varying remainder periods and gives us consistent CLV estimates. The result is a data frame with CLV broken up into realized revenue and future revenue, which are called equity, and with the expected number of purchases for each customer. This data frame provides the basis for doing deeper customer analysis and to understand the characteristics of the most valuable customers, channels, and acquisition tactics. Once we have a trained model and the CLV predictions, we can start analyzing purchase behavior. And one thing you'll notice in your data is that the expected purchases in a two-year period, for instance, will increase non-linearly with the number of purchases made in the first three months. If you look at the frequency column and the average purchase column in this grouped pandas data frame, you can see this pattern. Another thing worth looking at is the relationship between expected orders and recency for different levels of frequency. This is one of the strengths of this model, its ability to capture the purchase cadence of the individual customer. What you see is that the expected number of orders in the 24 month period will fall quite fast for a customer that has been active in the first 12 months, but experiences a negative shift in the purchase cadence, since this is actually a churn signal. If you look at the green line representing customers with a high frequency of 15 purchases in the first 12 months, the total expected number of purchases in the entire period is quite sensitive to the recency of the customer compared to the other frequency-based cohorts. And this is because age, recency, and frequency interact when determining the probability of a customer making subsequent purchases. We can utilize the capability of the model to produce win-back triggers that are better than simply counting the day since last purchase. Imagine you have two customers with the following purchase patterns. If you count the days since last purchase and use that as a trigger for a win-back campaign, you'll likely trigger a campaign for customer one before you trigger a campaign for customer two. 
However, customer two has shown a shift in purchase cadence, which is actually a strong churn signal. We can capture this behavior and implement it in a trigger in one of two ways. Either we can use the built-in function probability alive to predict the churn probability and choose a threshold to activate the campaign, or we can look at changes in the predicted number of orders and select customers that have the largest negative changes as a trigger to a winback program. Modeling the CLV of your customers becomes particularly valuable when you automate the process by deploying the model on, for instance, the Google Cloud Platform. This will allow you to set up automated triggers and build dashboards around the CLV values so that you can monitor the value of different segments and the entire customer base. Here's an example of what that might look like. So you extract the data from the Shopify API, and then you build a pipeline that feeds the data into Google BigQuery. Then you want to send the data to your CDP. If you're using Klaviyo, you'll send it in as customer properties in Klaviyo. And then you'll typically feed the CLV estimates back into BigQuery with the intent of building dashboards used for insight generation. The exact architecture, of course, depends on the specific needs, but this is one way this is typically done. That's it for now. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe for similar content in the future. Thanks for watching.